Okay, so here's our fourth lecture. We're going to talk about continuous function for this lecture. And <clears throat> I believe many of you guys heard the word ca uh, continuous function on like the first page of any calculus book, right? And the generalization will be discussed in this lecture. So we'll cover all these special cases as we've seen like on the real line and Cartesian plane and like the XYZ axis. And now we're gonna look for like the general definition of a continuity of a function. And it is important in the future. So things you're gonna learn about something that's like just direct generalizations. <coughs> so first here's a definition. So let X and Y be two topological spaces and a function be map maps from X to Y is said to be continuous. If the open set in Y, then the inverse image, image is open in X. For any open set Y, for any open set V and Y, the inverse image of V under F is open in X. Then the function is said to be continuous. Well, so here's some notes. So if the topology, the codomain y, if the codomain y is given by a basis, so if the y is generated by a basis, then to prove the continuity of f, we only have to prove the basis element. Like we only focus on basis element y because we have this formula, right? Because every open set is a union of basis elements. And then we have this, rules for inverse images so we know that the v open the v f inverse v is open if each of the like the uh each of those are open okay and here's a straight up examples so continuous function and matrix <coughs> the epsilon delta definition and this definition are equivalent so the continuity of this and the epsilon definition of this is equivalent, and the proof is in the my uh, baby Rudin's lecture. And it's not very recent enough because we have not discussed about the metric space yet, but I assume that you already learned my calculus lecture, okay? So here are some like important properties. So if X and Y are two topological spaces, then the four things are equivalent. So f is continuous and for subset a of x the image of closure of a under f is a subset of the closure of the image so the image of the closure is a subset of closure of the uh, of the image and also three is uh, really interesting right so we defined we define like the open set. We define for open, then this is open. Well, if f is continuous, then we also have this. For every closed, that it is closed. So we can define continuous function. We also can define continuous function in this way, right? Because open and closed are just complements. And we're only using the fact that open and closed are complement in this proof. And for also for is that Oh, four is a bit, four is really straightforward, okay? So for each x and x and each neighborhood y, v of f of x, say, let me draw a little diagram here. So if you have your f of x, if you have f of x here, and then you have a neighborhood, okay? Then, have neighborhood V, right? Right? And we have X is here. We have our X is here. Right? So for X and X, this is X and X, this is FX, a neighborhood V of FX. Then we can find a neighborhood U such that the image is also all included in E. So we have a image u right 
So when you're mapping under the map F, right? This whole thing is f of u right so here's a diagram this is four this is four okay so like for so so you have fx and for any neighborhood v for this x we can find a neighborhood u such that under the map f we can still also include it in this okay if 4 holds for the point x, we said f is continuous at the point x. Okay, so the proof for this theorem is going to be two steps. So first, we're going to prove this chain. So 1, 2, 3, 1. Okay, this is our first step. So let's do 1, 2, 2 first. We should do 1, 2, 2 first. So what to do is that we're given that it's continuous. Then you want to know that for every subset A, the closure of the image, no, the image of the closure is the subset of the closure of the limit. No, the, the closure of the, the image. Okay? So, I want to show this. If x is in the closure, the fx is in the closure of f of a. So, first, we let v be a neighborhood of fx. Then we know this is open because if it's continuous, right? And. We know that x is in this set, right? Well, f is in this set, and also x is in the closure of a. This is a this is a neighborhood of x, right? Which means that we know this is true. It intersects a, right? Because this. Well, if this is true, we pick an element y, then. We know that f of y is in v and also in f of a, right? Because y is in the inverse image of v, so we have f y must be in v. And also, f y is also in the image of f of a, right? So this we know this. Okay, so now we have that the neighborhood, we have a neighborhood of fx, right? For fx and fa, right? No, no, no. So we have v, a neighborhood of fx. Then we know that v intersects fa. So every neighborhood of fx intersects fa, which precisely means this. Okay? Now it's 2 to 3. So 2 to 3 is... Oh, for every subset a of x, we have f a of f. Okay. So, we let b closed in y, and let a equals the inverse image of f of b. We want to show that a is closed in x, right? And we're going to do this. We're going to do this by showing that it is equal to its own closure. So, first, we know that f of a equals to this, and this is a subset of b. The elementary set theory, okay? Now, if x is in A, if x is in A, then fx is in f of A, and it's a subset of closure of f A, because we assume 2 to be true, right? Assume 2 to be true. Then, if we keep going, this is a subset of B, right? Because this closure is the subset of this closure, and B is closed, so it's equal to its own closure. So which means that fx is in b. So x is an inverse image of b, which is a. So this, and we're done, right? And we're done. Okay, three to one, three to one. Oh, so if this is true, 
that this is true. <laughs> okay, three to one. So if V is open and wide, then this is closed and wide. The complement of V and Y, right? Now this is equal to this by direct substitution. And this is by the property of inverse image. And this is equal to X, right? And we know that we know that this is closed, right? Because this is this is closed, right? So so this is closed. And the complement x minus this is open, right? And we're done. Because we open y and then we open x. Okay. So we're done with this. And the step two is we're gonna prove the equivalence between one and four. So step two, one to four to one. <coughs> so we let x be an x and we let b be a neighborhood of fx we know that this is a neighborhood of x so if a view is equal to f of this just direct substitution right and this is a subset of v like by elementary set theory you can verify this on your own so it's not really hard okay now we inverse direction so we let v be open and y and we want to show that this is open in x right so we let x be in this and we let fx then we know that fx is in v right <laughs> then we know that um for every so so fx is in v right so we pick a neighborhood ux such that this is true. This is by four, right? There exists, right? So we can pick one. And this implies that this is a subset of this, right? And we also have ux is a subset of this, which is a subset of this. Now, are you following? So, because, right, we have a neighborhood of fx, then we have a neighborhood of u such that this is true. Like, this diagram here, right? So, um, we have an open set, and we want to show this is open, right? And we pick an element in this, then we know this is true. Well, then it means that V is a neighborhood of Fx. Then we pick a neighborhood such that this is true, right? Then we apply the inverse image on both sides, and then this is by elementary set theory, so we have every ux is a subset of f negative 1 v, right? And now if we take union of ux among all x and f inverse image of v, this is equal to f of v, right? And these sets are open in x, so f of negative 1 v is still an arbitrary union of open sets, which is still open. Well, why are they equal to each other? Um, this is a subset of this because all of them is a subset of V, right? And this is a subset of this because every point in V, F minimum V, right, we have a neighborhood, so yeah. <coughs> okay, now here's an important concept which is called homeomorphisms. So, what is a homeomorphism? So, let X and Y be two topological spaces. And we have a function, we have a mapping between them, it's a bijection. If both the function f and the inverse function are continuous then f is called a homeomorphism well it is possible that the inverse image is not continuous even f is a bijective and f is continuous but it is possible that f negative one is not continuous there i think there's an example in the textbook but i didn't include it because i don't have much time so but you know, so we have to require that. We have to require that this are continuous because this, this doesn't automatically mean that this is continuous, right? Okay, with these good properties, then F is called a homeomorphism, okay? So let's see what does it mean if F number one is uh, continuous, so. 
if u is open in x, then the inverse image, the inverse image of f negative one of u is equal to f u. Why? Because here's my proof. So if x is in this, right, then this is in u, right? Then you apply f on both sides that x is in f u. And other way around, if x is in f u, then the inverse image of x on the f is in u, which means that x is the, is the inverse image of of negative one and u. So, so these are like equal to each other. Well, also we have to show that this is equal to u. Okay, so this this part this part is just elementary set theory. You can doesn't matter. And for this part, it's a bit trickier. So if x is in this, then we know that fx is in f of u. And we know that there exists a and u such that f a equal to fx. But a is equal to x because f is bijective. So it's injective, right? So that is true. So x is in u. If x is in this, x is in u. So these sets are equal to each other. Okay, so <coughs> this means that, okay, the inverse image of u under the map this is open, but the inverse image of u under this is the same as inverse u under map, <laughs> right? So it's like you have an open set u, then this, which is f u, this is open. So if this is open and this is open, also, if this is true, Right, which means that if f of u is open, right, they take their inverse image, which is precisely equal to u, is also open, right. So with that being said, a homeomorphism, homeomorphism is basically a bijective cor correspondence between two open sets. No, between open sets. Is a bijective correspondence um, of open sets between two topological spaces. Yes, that's precise. And with that being motivated, we have a new definition which is called a topological property. So, topological property is like any property of X that is entirely depend on the topology or V at open sets. Well, why we define this? Because if it's all entirely depend on the topology, if we have, if we can build a homeomorphism, right, then th the property on X via F to Y, it preserves like some properties, right? So it's like, it is really similar to the word isomorphism in algebra, right? Basically like it preserves uh, operation, it preserves its algebraic structure. And in our topology version, it's like, the homeomorphism preserves its topological structure. Okay, so now we have suppose that f from x to y is injective, a continuous map, and x and y are topological spaces. Now, if we let z be the set, the image set considered as a subspace, then f prime from x to z. By restricting the range of f is bijective. Yes, this is clear. Then, if this is a homeomorphism of x with z, right? So, um, let me draw a bit a little picture. So, if you have x, right, and you have y. <clears throat> and f under the mapping f under the mapping f right you have it's injective right so this is f of x right now um sorry sorry sorry, sorry. so um under in, in, under the mapping f injective now we define another map from x to y it's called 
fx, where the inverse, the image is, is entirely this. It's bijective. Bijective. And this is injective. Right? <clears throat> so, um, so basically, y is happened to be the codomain of x. And but the inverse image of x is being the codomain of f prime, and f prime is being bijective because we're restricting the range, right? Now we say that if f prime is a homeomorphism, we say that f is a topological embedding or simply an embedding. It's called <coughs> right, so it's embedding, it's basically. Right. Oh, I'm so bad at <laughs> right. Homeomorphic and beating. Tom right? And embedding, right? Now, okay, after that, we have some rules for constructing continuous function. And uh, so we're gonna review all of them. You can take a look first. So A is basically saying that a constant function is continuous. Well, it's really obvious, but we still have to prove it, right? <clears throat> so A, we let V open a Y then the inverse image of V is either empty or X, right? Because V either include the single point or not. If it's included, then the inverse image is X. If it does not, this. But it either way is open. So, so it's continuous, right? We're good. Now B is like the inclusion map. So if A is a subspace, then the inclusion function is continuous. So, which means that for any F set open and X, the inverse image is open and what? It should be open in A, all right? Be careful. It should be open in A. So if U is open in X, then the inverse image of the inclusion map is U intersecting A, right? Because, right? Because first of all, you, you should be in A first because you're defined in A. And it also should be intersecting U. Right? So this is like straightforward. And U is open. So U intersect A is open in A. And we're good. And C is say like the composition of continuous map is continuous. Well, this is also a true, uh, not true, a, a standard result and analysis, right? The composition of continuous function is continuous like functions that maps from mixture space to another right well so if u is open z if of night when you open y then this is open in z right and we have this is basically equal to this and this can be checked okay um the same time i'm just not going to check it here also, D is that the restricting domain. So, if A is a subspace of X, then the restricted function is also continuous, provided that F is continuous. Well, F with the restricted domain A is basically the F composition of F in the inclusion map, and where I is from A to X, right? And C, D, E, 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 and F. Okay. E is basically saying that, oh, um, so if Z is a sparse space, then G from X to Z by restricting the range is continuous. And Z, if you're expanding the range, right, Z having Y as a subspace, then this is also continuous. So, First, um, if 
fx is the subset of z, okay? And we want to show that g from x to z is continuous. So this is like, okay? So if you let b open in z, then b is equal to some z intersecting u. And f of inverse image of, f of u is equal to g, inverse image of g under b, and which is open in x, right? So this is like restricting the domain. So if we have, right, if, if it's open in z, right, then this z intersecting u, where u open in y. Right? And this is open in x. It is equal to this, so this is open in x. So for b open to z, this is open x, which means that x to z is continuous, okay? And for the expanding range, it's just, you, you can use the inclusion map and use the composition of them. And for f, it's a bit complicated, but, okay, first we have to note that x, if x can be a union of open sets, and each of f of u restricted domain is continuous, and the whole function is continuous. Okay, so if we let v open in y, then this is basically equal to this. Why? Because, okay, so this is v, right? Okay, so this <coughs> is supposed to have v here, and you have the inverse image of f of v, and then you have u alpha. So only elements in here, under the function this, maps to v, right? So, you can, you can check it with like set theory, but, but here's like the straightforward approach, right? And we know that all the u alpha is open in x. This is open in x. This is open in u alpha. Yes, this is open in u alpha. <laughs> and v is open in y. And, okay. <laughs> this is open in x because Um, this is open in, oh, so this is open in u alpha, right? And u alpha is open in x, right? Then this is equal to this, which is open in x. Mm. Because this is open in u alpha, and u alpha is open in x, right? So this is open in x, which means that this is open in x. I apologize that I said this is open in x directly, but it is not how it goes. We have one more step. I said, okay, so we have this is open in x, and we have f of v, negative one of v, is equal to the unions of alpha, alpha, of all alpha, like this. And each of them is open in x. And the union is this, is open in x, okay? All right, and we have a passing lemma. A passing lemma is basically, oh, if you have x, can, you it can be expressed as a union of closed sets. Then, if f and g are continuous, such that they agree on intersections, then we combine them, we get a new continuous function such that on A, on A, we have a C equal to fx. If it's on B, like it's a gx. So, first we just let C be a closed set in Y. And the inverse image of H of C, right, which is the inverse of this, well, each of them is closed because they're continuous. 
then this implies that g at h is continuous. Right, because we we setting this, right, then the inverse image of h under c is either in this or is in this, right? So, this can be done by casework. Uh, well, if you're not sure with this equality, I can do some verification here. So, <coughs> this direction, so if x is in this, right, then h of x is in c, right? This, this, which means that either fx and c or g of x is in c, which means that x is either in this or this, right? And for this direction, if we have x is in this or this, then we know that fx is in c or g of x is in c but both of them implies that h of x is in c right then we know that x is in this okay so this is justified and we're good the passing lemma just because I forgot a bit, like I forgot the details, so I have to verify it again. I'm not really sure about this, but I have to be responsible, so I have to verify it again. Okay, so um, we have a function from A to your product space, and each of them is a component space, and then a component function or coordinate functions, right? And if this is continuous, if only if each of them are continuous. Well, this is uh, simple because we have we have we have to find what are projection maps. <coughs> and we know that the projection maps are continuous, right? The projection map is continuous. So f of one of a which is the projection this is a con composition, right? If f is continuous, this is continuous, then this is continuous. And also, if the components are continuous. So first, if a is in this, that means that f a is in u times v, right? Then, which means that f one a is in u and f two a is in v. Well, this means that um, the inverse image of u and v should be the intersection of these two sets, right? Because because these these uh, these conditions are equivalent, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So this whole direction implies that this is true. And all this direction, right, implies that this is true. This should be end. Right? <laughs> and we know that the coordinate function is continuous, right? So if u is open, then this is open in A. And also this is open in A. So you have an intersection of open sets in A. Then this is again open in A. And I think that's it for the continuous function.